You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Welcome. You are watching, listening to the Financial Survival Network. Well, we're in the midst of a Category 5 economic storm around the globe, making it a very treacherous waters for, for you investors out there, for all of us. And, uh, well, we've got uh, our good friend Adrian Reed back on with us, and you find him at enlightenedstocktrading.com. Adrian, so it's great to have you back on. Markets, what is going on there and how much longer is it going to happen? Oh, Kerry, um, how much longer is going to happen? To be honest, I'm I'm not completely sure. What's, uh, what's going to happen or what's happening right now is, look, there's just a whole lot of uncertainty, as you know. And I think um, all of the past ills, the past sins are coming home to roost. And uh, if we don't get inflation under control, uh, then um, all sorts of nasty things are going to happen. So um, <clears throat> what can traders do about it is probably the biggest uh, the, the biggest thing. And I think the lesson in, in the markets right now is if you're a long only buy and hold investor, uh, this is a sort of pain that sometimes you have to endure, and and it's not it's not particularly pleasant, and it's certainly not profitable. So, um, yeah, a, a more active approach, uh, long and short, so you can make money on the way down, is really really helpful right now. All right, so um, obviously we're in a full fledged bear market, right? No question yeah. about that. We agree. Yeah. yeah. And every bounce that we're seeing is just a dead cat bounce, a sucker rally, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But one of the, one of the um, more dangerous things about bear markets is that the biggest up days and the strongest rallies actually occur in bear markets. And so uh, investors and traders right now have to be really careful not to be fooled when uh, <clears throat> the market looks euphoric, you know, and there's a, there's, there's massive rallies and uh, people will think naturally that it's over because it's, the market's moving up again. But uh, a lot of the time, these rallies are not just sucker rallies, like you said, and uh, towards the end of the bear market, that slows down and then there'll be a real turnaround. But you've got to be very wary in the meantime of jumping on board, loading up on the long side, because it's quite dangerous. Yeah, well, it's interesting because, uh, what's his name? Uh, Benjamin Graham, um, someone who uh, we all know is a legendary investor. And he always said that, you know, you had the major market movement you know, secular bull or secular bear. And then you had these, what he called intermediate turns, and they could even go so far as to recoup all the losses or the gains uh, that occurred during uh, during this secular market. And that mm -hmm. many investors often mistook the intermediate move for actually a new bear or a new bull market, because, but that basically is very violent, quick, and the time frame could last, uh, you know, a matter of weeks to months. So mm. I think uh, that admonition is probably very useful now, huh? Yeah, I think so. And uh, there's a couple of things you've got to look out for to to know if it's really over. Um, and I think one of the big problems that, that traders and investors have is is lack of patience and a short time horizon because. Uh, in life, everything is so quick now that we tend to sort of look at what's happening uh, in the very recent past and use that to project to the future. But in the markets, you've got to take a bit of a longer term view. And um, if we if we're down 20, 30 percent, something like that, and there's a rally, chances are it's not going to be a new bull market. Chances are it's just a bear market rally, which is going to turn over and roll over again. Um, so you've got to look for a couple of things. You've got to look for a, a longer term train, change in the trend, and you've got to look for lower volatility. Uh, right now, we've got pretty high volatility. It's not off the charts, but it's 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 higher than what it would be in a strong in a healthy bull market. And so, uh, while the market vol market volatility remains high, we're not in a bull market. It's uh, it, that volatility's got to drop, and the trend really has to change. 
And by really changing, I mean, you know, above one of the longer term moving averages, you know, 100, 200 day moving average, uh, not a you know, 20, 50 day moving average, which gets a lot of people excited. Um, that uh, the trend change starts by crossing above a short term moving average, like a 50 day or something like that. But just because it crosses above a 50 day moving average, it doesn't mean it's going to be a new bull market. It might just be a really strong bear market rally. So you do have to be cautious and patient and wait for an obvious trend change. Right. All right. So obviously, uh, obviously, knowledge of markets, history, all of that, very important here, isn't it? Yeah, it's it really pays to study what's happened. And by study, you can do this in a couple of ways. You can obviously do a lot of reading and understand what the big market moves moves were. But it's also really important to just look at a lot of charts. And uh, what I'm what I do is I I would take like the Dow or the S and P and go back as far as you can. You can get a hundred years of history on the Dow, so you sure. can look at a lot of moves and understand how the market has has shifted and ebbed and flowed over time and really study at a at a sort of granular level. Don't look at a 10-year, 20-year time horizon because it just looks like it's going up exponentially. You've got to sort of drill into the bear markets and notice how volatile they get, how deep the, decl- the, the downswings are, how steep the upswings are, and then what happens at the end of the upswings because it, it collapses again. And um, really spend some time going bar by bar and understanding what you can expect in a bear market. Because when you don't know what to expect, that's when the emotions come up, the stress or the FOMO or the, you know, the the, the fear. And uh, that's when you start making mistakes and losing a lot of money. Okay. So how have you been doing? What, what have been your most successful trades recently, Adrian? Uh, most successful trades recently um, are short or, uh, US stocks and short Hong Kong stocks. Uh, let me talk about Hong Kong stocks first because that's just been a a, a blind you know a blinder of a move. Um, I have a, a system that shorts equities when the when the major index rallies and rolls over below a long term moving average. It's the sign of a the sucker rally ending. That's a good time to get short, and so um, that system will short a bunch of weak stocks at that point and set a profit target further down. And so what happens is. You start a bear market, there's a rally, then it rolls over, you get short, and then you wait for the subsequent decline to hit your profit targets, and then you get out. In Hong Kong, um, I shorted a whole bunch of stocks uh, a few months back, and basically probably 80% of them, the 85% of them hit their profit targets, and the the rest just uh, exited with a small profit or a very small loss. So that was a killer short. Um, unfortunately, it did so well early on. I was out of the market before last night or yesterday's move, which was down six point something percent, which was incredible. Um, that move didn't uh, that down move didn't uh, spread to the rest of the world as a China specific thing. So that was really good. In U.S. stocks, um, similar sort of system when the, uh, the the major index is in a downtrend and it rallies and rolls over again, I get short a whole bunch of stocks that are already trending down. And those shorts have been doing pretty well in the last uh, last few months as well. It's a broad-based system. I just short anything that's weak. So you became kind of a victim of your own success here, huh? Well, in, in Hong Kong, yeah. I was like, oh, I can't believe that I got out to, uh, too early in this case. But at least I did bank a whole bunch of profits. And uh, the system did what it was supposed to do. But you don't always catch the you know full extent of every move. Yeah, well, you can't. Hard to get in at the, the bottom and uh, go out at the top and vice versa. Hard to yeah. get in at the top and go at the bottom when you're going uh, short. So you just have to be grateful that it was a winning trade, right? Don't just survive, thrive. The Financial Survival Network. Gold Terra Resource Corp. is a gold exploration company that has assembled a highly prospective district-scale land position on the doorstep of the city of Yellowknife in Canada's Northwest Territories. Gold Terra is currently focused on expanding and delineating gold resources at the company's Yellowknife City Gold Project with the goal of discovering over 5 million ounces. With ready access to infrastructure and multiple high-grade gold discoveries, Gold Terra is on track to re-establishing Yellowknife as one of the premier gold mining districts in Canada. Gold Terra trades as YGT in Toronto and YGTFF on the OTC. For more information, go to goldterracorp.com. That's goldterracorp.com. This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever. 
Yeah, absolutely. And follow the rules and, and be consistent. This is this is one of the, the biggest uh, challenges, I think, for, for traders is you've got to have rules that you're comfortable with. You've got to follow them. And you've got to realize that they're not always going to be right. They're not always going to catch as much of the move as you'd like. But as long as the, the rules do their job and take profit out of the market, then then you're okay. And that's uh, that's all you can hope for. So what about looking ahead? Obviously, prices continue to go down, uh, increased volatility. What are the big plays, do you think, that are coming up? Uh, look, it's... <sighs> I don't. I don't like to predict exactly what's gonna gonna play out, but I I think there's a lot more downside. Uh, if um if inflation stays high, which I think it will, and the Fed doesn't lose its nerve, then um we've got more, more we've got more moves to the downside as interest rates go up. Uh, but eventually we're gonna have to start looking for a, a bottom and a and a um, a bit of optimism and a turn up in the market. But like I said, uh, you want to be patient for that. I I'm not gonna jump on a rally really quickly. Uh, expecting it's going to be a new a new bull market. It's um, patience is the game, and if you want to survive and come out the other end of a bear market with more money than you had when you went in, you've got to have rules to prop it on the way down. That's why shorting is powerful to learn. Um, but you also don't want to be too aggressive on the short side because um, those bear market rallies are really really fast and and uh, and big. And if you use a lot of leverage, for example, you can wipe yourself out trying to make money, and it's still a bear market. So yeah, got to be really careful. Always remember. Yes. So um, actually, I remember one guy, uh, Howard Katz, he, he published a uh, newsletter called The One-Armed Economist. And he said in a de recession or depression, you win by not losing or not losing as much as everyone else. Mm -hmm. So when you come out the other side, you have more to start over with. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a quite it's quite important um, because a lot of people will try and press the markets and make money all the time. And uh, if you don't have a shorting strategy, it's going to be really hard to make money right now. And so the best thing to do is probably to stand aside because you don't want to get wiped out trying to you know scratch out little profits here and there. Um, if you're going to play the long side in a bear market, you've got to be very nimble and you want to have rules that get you in and get you out at precise times so you don't get carried away, you don't end up holding on too long and end up getting whacked by the next uh, the next dip. All right, so a stock like Tesla has the best way to play something like that, just stay away? Well, uh, let me let me pull up the chart here right now, one sec. Wow. <laughs> Look, a lot of people are going to be looking at Tesla right now and thinking- the bellwether. It's a it's a bellwether. It's a bargain. It's you know it's much lower than it was um, by the dip. But I got to tell you, I think by the dip is one of the most dangerous sayings in the markets. It's BFD, right? <laughs> yeah. It's um, you know, momentum persists is something that I kind of say a lot, and the momentum is down. And you might get lucky, and you might pick the bottom of a dip. But fact remains, we're in a bear market. I mean, Tesla right now is, you know, it's it's pushing towards 200, you know, dropping towards yeah. 200 rather. And it's been as high as 400. There's been a series of lower highs. It's clearly falling. I mean, I, I don't want to predict about a particular stock or tell people they should buy it or they should sell it. But, mm -hmm. you know, what I don't want people to do is think it's cheap. I should buy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, I gotcha. you know, that... It's um it's dangerous thinking when you're in a bear market. In a bull market, that thinking can work. Buy the dip works when the market is buoyant, when the indices are going up, when stocks recover quickly. But when we're in a bear market and interest rates are rising and there's a global uncertainty and there's inflation and there's all of this, buying the dip is pretty dangerous. So looking at a chart like Tesla, you could say, okay, it's going down, but the it looks like it's it's just below the last support level. So it sort of broke the last support level and it looks like it might, it could rally and it might, but it would still be a bear market rally. And so any move is going to be relatively short lived until the whole market turns around. So um, yeah, caution. Yes. Caution is the byword. And that kind of sums up uh, what you need to be thinking about. I think with the broader market is uh, yes, uh, we will have these rallies, but if you're not, uh, if you don't have the trader's temperament and you catch one, you better take the first available exit because mm. otherwise you'll be taking the elevator down to the basement. 
Yeah, you really uh, there's there's two rules that are critical, and 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 that's one of them is is get out when uh, you first get the signal to get out. If your trade is losing, make sure you've got a stop loss, and make sure you take the exit when the stop loss gets hit. Because in a bear market, if you hold on hoping for a better price or hoping to get out even, you're really going to get hurt. And you know, financial survival networks about survival first, right? You want to yeah. protect your capital, and uh, and so make those keep those losses small. Holding and hoping is not the strategy for right now, I believe. All right. Well, we like your attitude as always, Adrian. Um, again, uh, the the website is enlightenedstocktrading.com. Take a look at it. Hey, uh, we'll have a link to it in the show notes of this interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Got a question for Adrian or myself? Shoot me an email, kl at kerrylutz.com. We'll get you an answer back quick. And anything else, just don't hesitate to put some comments up on the YouTube channel. We will answer all that we can. Adrian, a pleasure. Thanks so much for coming back on. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Kerry. Thanks for listening to Kerry Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.